y'all hear us? Hey, Dustin. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. We'd like to welcome Dustin Johnson into the virtual interview room here at the CJ Cup at Summit. He's making his season debut. Dustin, you won the Masters last November, had nine top ten finishes, and finished eighth in the FedEx Cup standings. If you can just give us a recap of your season. Yeah, I thought it was obviously got off to a good start last, you know, last fall, but you know, didn't play quite as well as I'd have liked to, you know, during the year, but you know, felt like I started to play a, a little bit better towards the end of the season and um you know, obviously had a had a really nice Ryder Cup and you know, hopefully can just build off of that a little bit. You know, the game's starting to turn around. Obviously, you know, kind of took the last couple of weeks off, so you know, trying to trying to get back into the swing of things here this week. And with that, you'll be making your first start at the CJ Cup this week. Um, just some overall thoughts on the tournament experience, and then this being a different course at the Summit Club, and your thoughts on the course. Yeah, I mean, it is. I think it's my yeah, it's my first time playing CJ Cup, but you know, obviously, yeah, they they're doing a great job with the you know with the tournament. They're they're great hosts, and then. Obviously, playing out here at Summit, I've, I've played here a few times. And um, yeah, it's a great course. It's in good condition. So it should be a great week. Awesome. And with that, we'll open it up for questions from media on the line. Just a reminder to media, those asking the questions, type your name into the chat, and we will call on you. First up, Steve DiMaggio with USA Today. Dustin, I'm just curious, does it seem like a does it feel like a, the start of a new season to you, or is it just a continuation and you just had a couple weeks off? Um, yeah, more of a continuation with a couple weeks off. Just, you know, I feel like, especially the last 18 months, played a lot of golf tournaments and, you know, with not really a lot of breaks. So um, I'm going to play this week, and then, you know, hopefully I'm going to have a nice little break here for, for the rest of the year. Is it incentive for you to uh, get to Maui? Is that on your mind at all? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely like to, you know, to qualify for Maui. So um, that's definitely something that I always shoot for, and it's a golf tournament that I always love playing. And, you know, I feel like that's a good start to the year if you're playing at Maui. And lastly, is there any particular part of your game that uh, you were most frustrated with last year that you're trying to work on heading into the new season? Yeah, I feel like, you know, for the most part, you know, my iron play wasn't quite as strong as, as I would have liked it to be. Um, you know, so definitely work on that a lot this off season, And then, you know, I can always drive it and putt it and wedge it better. So kind of work on everything, really. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next up, Chris Boutrous with Golf Channel. Hey, DJ. Uh, just wanted to get your reaction to the USGA putting out yesterday the local rule about uh, no clubs longer than 46 inches? Um, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter to me just because I don't use a club longer than that. So, um, But I, I don't really understand it just because <clears throat> the longer the club, the harder it is to hit, you know, on the planet. So I feel like, you know, if someone can hit a 48-inch driver and hit it straight, more power to them. I mean, I've tried it. I've hit longer clubs, and yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it goes further, but it also goes a lot more crooked. Okay, thank you, sir. Next up, Greg Robertson with Las Vegas Review Journal. Hey, Dustin. I know you said you you played Summit a couple times, but can you talk about the approach you guys take when you're at a new venue that most of you have never seen before? If, if uh, there's any extra work that goes in on these first couple of days, and whether you think someone like Colin and Maverick have an advantage since they're members out here. Um, well, I mean, obviously they play here a lot, so you know it's gonna they're gonna know the course a lot better than than the rest of the field. Just it's more you know the greens, you know the greens here they're you know they're good, but you know they're not that easy to read them. And obviously, if you play here a lot, you kind of you know the greens a little bit better than the rest, but. You know, you still got to go out and play golf and hit good golf shots. And then as far as the course, it seems like it's one of the tougher ones to, to walk. Do you think physical fitness is going to play a part this week? 
Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like it's too bad. I mean, there's, you know, it's got some hills, but it's not that bad of a walk. Um, but yeah, I mean, anytime you're, especially playing up here, and it's a lot of ups and downs, but, you know, the, the walk's not too bad. So I don't think that's going to be play a big part of it. But as far as learning a, learning a golf course, um, you know, our yardage books are so good. So, you know, you, you got all the numbers and, you know, you kind of, it shows you where you need to hit it. But, yeah, obviously just playing the course a couple of times, you know, kind of getting used to it is, is, is mainly the, you know, what we try to do. We'll go to Brian Hilbert with Golf Las Vegas now. Hey, Justin, thanks for taking some time this morning. Writing a story on sports betting, obviously specifically to golf, and it's being embraced. The PGA Tour has an official relationship that's bringing new people to the game. What's the first thing that comes to your mind about the sports betting impact on golf and following the different odds, et cetera? Um. I mean, I don't, obviously, I don't really follow, you know, golf betting, other sports, maybe. But, um, you know, obviously, it's good. I think it's good for the game just because, like you said, it brings a lot more people who are going to be interested in it. And, yeah, so I, I don't see any anything wrong with it. And I, I think it's good for the game just because, like you said, it brings a lot more interest to it. Thank you. We'll go to Doug Ferguson with the Associated Press next. Open your eyes. There you go. Uh, what's the best part about hanging with Butch when you come to Vegas? Um, mostly just the stories. It's always a good time. You're always laughing a lot, and you always have a lot of fun. We're getting work done? Here and there. Get a, get a little bit of work done in between. All right. And then uh, the last one, a little bit out of left field. Uh, have you ever thought down the road about being a Ryder Cup captain? Did you think you'd be a good one? Yeah, I would love to do it one day. So, yeah, I think it would be fun. I think I would be a good captain. And, yeah, it's something that I definitely would like to do at some point. How would you be a good captain? Um, well, I feel like I would let the guys just, you know, do their do their thing. It's, you know, I think that's, that's most important, you know, the, the players are very good, you know, it's not, I don't need to tell them how to play a golf course or tell them what to do, but, you know, just put them in the situation where they can succeed. And, um, you know, I feel like I got a good relationship with, with most of the players out here. So, um, and hopefully I'll be out here, you know, long enough to where, you know, I'll know the guys that are going to be on the team. And I don't know how much you ever like look back at highlights of, of some of your golf. Do you do that a lot? <coughs> do you go back and, and watch highlights of tournaments where you do well? Yeah, some of them I do. Absolutely. If, if you had your choice, would you go back and look at your performance at the Ryder Cup, or would you go back and watch the press conference? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Where, where do you think you perform better? On the golf course. By a big margin or a small margin? <laughs> well, well, you can't win any points in the press conference, so the golf course. All right. Thank you. We'll go to Ben Edler with PGTour.com. Hey, you won plenty of points in that press conference, let me tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to know, like, when do you reset your goals and your stat goals, et cetera? Is it after the Tour Championship or December 31? Um, yeah, more like, yeah, after Tour Championship, kind of maybe like a, just a – you know, probably once I go back home from here, you know, kind of reevaluate everything. And, um, you know, when I start, once I start, you know, getting ready for, you know, next year. So probably, you know, later in November, early, early to late November. So I know a few years ago you, you pinpointed the wedge play and you really cracked down on that. Do you prefer to find that one stat or two stats and give yourself that sort of narrow focus or do you try to sort of be more well-rounded? Well, I mean, I, obviously, to be a good player, you got to be very, you know, well-rounded. But yeah, I mean, I'll look at it, and if there's, you know, an area that, you know, I feel like there's a lot of room for improvement, maybe I'll focus more on that area. But still, you know, you still got to work on everything. And one more, a few years ago, Kapalua, you were asked 
Uh, did you see a sort of a seven, eight win season out there for a player anymore, like what Tiger and guys used to do? Uh, do you still see that out there? Is it something you think you could do? Something as big as seven or eight wins in a season? I mean, yeah, I believe it's possible. Obviously, if I can get my game, you know, back to the form it was, you know, kind of towards the end of end of last year, yeah, I definitely feel like it, it's possible. Obviously, it would be a, an incredible season, especially with the level of talent that's out here, you know, nowadays. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely possible. All right, thanks, Jim. Thank you. Next up, Doug Ferguson, Associated yeah. Press. One last thing, as it relates, and I'm, I'm speaking specific to, to tournament golf, uh, what causes you to get bored uh, with playing? Um, when I'm not playing well, I get I, I don't like it. Get bored. Get to, you know, but I don't really, I don't know if I get bored with playing, um, not playing golf, especially not in a tournament. Um, you know, sometimes with practice, but obviously to, to be successful and do, you know, what I want to do, you, you have to practice, but that's why, I, you know, this one good thing about the sport is you kind of set your own schedule. So if I'm on the range and I start to get bored, I just leave. Gotcha. How hard, how hard do you grind? Um, it, it just what's all your, the, what's your it just depends. Every day is a little bit different. Um, you know, are you talking about at a tournament or at home? More at home, I think. Yeah. Ho you're getting ready. This doesn't really count. It's just kind of out in the middle of the, the season. But. Right. Um, I mean, like I said, you know, every day is a little bit different. You know, some, some days I can, you know, practice and hit balls and go play, you know, for, you know, I guess with all of it total, you know, maybe six or seven hours, and some days I might be at the course for half an hour. So. And then, the, and then the back end of this is, what's the longest you can take away from from the tour before you get bored of whatever it is you're doing? That you're itching to get back. How, how, what's the longest you can go? Do you think? Or are we about to find out? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, you know. Not that long because, you know, I love the competition. I love being out here and playing and competing and playing in tournaments. But, you know, for me, it's definitely good to, to take some time off. But more like in the off season, you know, if it was in the middle of the season, you know, maybe about a month would probably be about the longest time that you'd want to, you know, maybe take a break for. But, um, you know, I feel like, yeah, because, you know, especially during the season or like the big part of the year, it's hard to, to get away for too long because, you know, for me, you know, kind of staying in that competitive mode is what kind of, you know, how you stay sharp and how you, you, you know, you continue to play well. Are you bored right now? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's it for questions, Doug. Appreciate Thank you. the time as always. Good luck this week.